Bonalakal, my garden of roses. I think it's time we talk about 5G telecommunications and the Trump administration's proposals. National security officials within the Trump administration have leaked a slideshow and memo, which was shown to the senior Trump officials and other agencies within the U.S. government today, which describes the National Security Council's interest in developing a centralized nationwide 5G network within the next three years. Though Trump has yet to comment publicly on the subject, the memo and these slides have raged, raised a large debate in the public sphere about what a nationalized and centralized 5G radio telecommunications network would entail and the impact it would have on high-speed internet and telecommunications markets. 5G would of course be the successor to 4G and 4G LTE wireless telecommunications operating on the 28, 38, and 60 gigahertz wavelengths, providing for low battery consumption of antenna equipped devices, both mobile phones and devices in the so-called internet of things categories, which I'll explain in just a moment, as well as reduced latency and the possibility of gigabit data transfer over the air. However, given the range at which millimeter wave bands can operate, this would also come at a very large cost, requiring more than twice the number of cell sites than cell towers in existence in the United States today. And while 3G and 4G, which can operate on cellular towers due to the range which those frequencies can, uh, can reach upwards of half a mile, uh, these give the United these 150,000 towers in the United States give near complete coverage. It would take more than 300,000, if not 500,000, cell sites built onto buildings and otherwise uh, placed up in very specific places within cities, towns, and rural areas in order to reach that same kind of coverage. This is also going to create severe backlash in the private 3G owning market and the investors supporting it, who have for the last year been investing heavily into the research and development of 5G, with companies like AT&T, Verizon, and T-Mobile relying heavily on the still theoretical advancement in radio telecommunications to be sure they can meet the consumer demand and heavy throughput of mobile devices and Internet of Things devices. It'll also create a lot of backlash in the political world, with states losing their current ability to make decisions on where and when network equipment can be placed, moving that control to the federal level. And given the FCC's private status within the government and oversight of commercial use of radio spectrums, it could create quite a standoff within the government if a centralized network is pursued. We already know that Ajit Pai is on Verizon's side when it comes to FCC decisions given his work history and his time in the FCC prior to becoming its chairman. The memo does describe a second option where wireless providers could provide their own 5G networks in competition with one another, the way it would be done anyway by divvying up the, um, the wavelengths in 100 to 500 megahertz blocks to each of the providers. However, the National Security Council does not actually appear to support this idea, as their intention for this is to compete with China both on a tech race level and a security level describing the centralized network as being absolutely important to protecting America against external bad actors within the world, and even describes the possibility of this centralized network as a moonshot in 5G development, making, of course, reference to the space race and uh, the successful moonshots which drove us into the lead post uh, Sputnik. But this has very little to do with technology and infrastructure itself when it comes to protecting us from China. It instead relates to the amount of influence that China exerts over tech companies in the United States through greater and greater investments. 
In addition, by centralizing, it would allow the U.S. government to centralize and maintain security, which is otherwise contracted out to companies like AT&T and Verizon by themselves, granting them the ability to, especially in, with regards to command and control within the military, centralize that and avoid the contracting of it out to private companies, increasing the security risks that poses. However, it would not be the U.S. government alone producing this network. And it could possibly open a government contract competition for developing the network equipment required to accomplish this. If done correctly, it would create and stimulate a large manufacturing base for radio and network routing equipment in the United States. But that is an extremely big if, given this is the United States government. And that industry is all but non-existent in the United States right now, with only Qualcomm, Uniper, and Cisco operating out of the United States, and companies including Samsung, Nokia, Ericsson, Huawei, and ZTE having much greater market strength at the moment with regards to radio infrastructure equipment, and in the case of Nokia, network routing equipment. The move from 4G to 5G is far more impactful than the move that from 3G to 4G, given the, given the growing market for the Internet of Things, which covers devices, vehicles, home appliances, and all other embedded hardware, which operate without direct human involvement, instead providing information and intelligently making decisions for real-world operations through sensors, actuators, servos, and specially designed software. As more and more of the world becomes dependent on these devices and their sensors, network throughput for video and audio data, let alone the sheer volume of raw text data that will be transferred between these devices and from these devices to servers and directly to your mobile phone, will greatly outstrip the current capacities of 4G and 4G LTE. The Internet of Things creates a groundbreaking step forward in technology, moving the world towards more and more custom-designed chipsets for specific purposes, as well as hardware design entering the hands of the average homebrew developer, who will no longer be dependent on hardware provided to them by giants such as Intel, Nvidia, Samsung, Cisco, and others. Other hardware companies, like Raspberry Pi and Arduino, have already set this in motion, providing the basic schematics one might use as a template to build their own chipsets and devices, as well as sensors, cameras, microphones, all of the existing uh, sensors and uh, actuators necessary to create these hands-off devices which can communicate with you over the internet. And in the coming years, we're going to be seeing more and more open schematics and custom designed chipsets entering the market. However, with China currently posed to lead the world in 5G development, they would also find themselves better positioned to develop hardware which operates on 5G for the Internet of Things, an industry the United States needs to maintain its technological dominance. And the fact of the matter is, without this technical dominance, we are more and more going to be seeing China providing, I mean, this is why Huawei and ZTE are becoming larger and larger in the mobile market, because companies like Samsung and Huawei and ZTE are necessary for companies like Verizon and AT&T to maintain their network. They both need high-end devices and phones, as well as inexpensive devices and phones to spread to more and more individuals and be sure that they have a broad enough market base. And as we get into the Internet of Things, where your car is going to be able to be reached by your phone, where you can check on your coffee machine by checking your phone, or check on the status of items in your fridge by checking your phone, uh, the necessity for these this hardware is going to only go up. We're going to be seeing companies like these, and these companies are far outstripping the speed at which United, the United States is accomplishing things. We need a second tech boom. Now, do I think that a centralized four, or 5G network can accomplish that? I'm not entirely sure, to be completely honest. I'm very much against centralization in general. 
However, if this is done right, and again, that's a huge if, we could see the American markets work together with the government contract model to open a large op uh, uh, manufacturing base within the United States. Forgive me, my nose is twitching today and it's bothering me. If done right, and it has to be done at least cert to some degree in a balance of mixed market methodology, we could see new companies and new startups who entirely work in the hardware and embedded hardware side of things uh, shake up our, our uh, technological strengths and take away from the centralization and monopolization that companies like Google, Verizon, and AT&T have by providing cheaper, simpler, and more uh, purpose-focused devices uh, to accomplish these things, not only with regards to the Internet of Things, but with regards to mobile phones that are running new operating systems instead of the market-dominant Android. We might even see solutions where apps can be developed for much simpler operating systems on mobile platforms, as can be found with Raspberry Pi running Linux alone. Uh, there are, of course, schematics out there that you can find to design your own mobile phone with a 4G antenna that instead of running on Android runs directly on Linux and has a generally Ubuntu-ish feel to it. And it's quite fascinating to see. However, this also depends on the Trump administration understanding what, what they're dealing with at this point. And while the Trump administration has focused very heavily on physical infrastructure such as roads, bridges, and of course the wall, he's not shown a great acumen for moving the technological industries forward. And the only direction technological industries have right now is to step into this open hardware and Internet of Things uh, services. And as much as I find the construction and infrastructure jobs in this country important, I also find technology jobs to be just as important, especially in this era of technological racing with other nations. Do I, do I think that we could accomplish this in three years? If appropriately funded and with the support of uh, investors creating a new market within the United States? Absolutely. However, that is a big if. And unfortunately, the new, uh, National Security Council is more worried about fighting things on a national level and maintaining security against China than they are with actually accomplishing something that would be good for the American people as a whole. As this story develops, I'm going to continue talking about it because with regards to technology, I think this is one of the most important stories going on right now. We need to move forward and we need certainly to decentralize and to a degree, a central uh, 5G network could assist in helping with that. However, as I've been saying over and over in this, and I hate repeating myself, but it's a really big if. Uh, I'm gonna, of course, there are the links to the um, memo, spread, uh, slideshow, and other links to, uh, talking about this subject below. And if you've enjoyed the show, please consider subscribing, please consider commenting, and um, if you enjoy everything I put out, go ahead and... Try and throw me $5 on Patreon. It would, it would help me quite a lot. Thank you so very much, and bonsoir. Mwah.